we've got this patriarchal transfer of culture, um, which makes it really hard to have conversations around relationships, around sex. We grew up in quite a traditional um, Pakistani family where these things just weren't spoken about. We don't really speak about sex openly. Just me saying the word is making me feel a bit uncomfortable. When we get married, it's sort of just shoved at us and we don't understand what we're getting into. People have shaped the culture in such a way now that it is frowned upon to talk about, but it's frowned upon to think about. I think Muslim women try to speak and I think lots of other people who are not Muslim women butt in um, and try to take over their conversation. We want the change, but we want it on our terms. And nobody's really listening to Muslim women. Writing is a form of thought, isn't it? Pakistani men. So that's clearly like an important part of your blog. You get to really put down your thoughts and then arrange them in a manner that you can articulate really well. So I'm going to give you a piece of back. I have put some notes and comments. It allows people to kind of put to words things that they may not have necessarily verbalised or communicated or even like discussed in any way before. Oh okay. I write, it came up, what no. were you looking at? So the rescue topics that came out from them were things like marital rape, how not to be a selfish lover, first night expectations, first night sex, first time sex. Um, are you seeing a pattern here? Um, well done. I've never thought about that way and the way you put it was really well. I loved it. it really you know, you're meant to be this goddess, you know, stuff like that. But you know, like this kind of, <laughs> It's okay for you to just take everything off and show your private parts to someone that you've never, you know, you never showed anyone. Whereas the men, they're, they're, they're being told what to do, shown what to do by the friends, by porn, by everything. But when it came to it, they just couldn't do it. I love that bit. I love that little build up bit. No, no, no. We have certain no. desires, we have certain wants that aren't spoken about. And for me, it was like, finally, I don't feel as if I am alone in that. Um, finally, there's a place for me to feel as if I can speak about something and not feel embarrassed or feel judged about it. I win the argument with my father over walking there on my own and not chaperoned. I'm not nervous. I've convinced myself that this isn't going anywhere and soon enough he'll see that I'm not interested and he'll realise he's wasting his time. Positions and sexual fetishes that people probably never knew existed are now all readily available on the big screen. Oh, and I think people are a lot bolder now. I think it's like cool or something. No one had told me what marriage was really like. Strangers congratulate you on your wedding as if that's the hard part. Saying yes and signing the papers. Guests expect to see you cry on the wedding. An Asian bride should never smile, the cameraman told me. But after the wedding is, that's when reality hits, once the glitz and glam of the wedding disappears. I chose a string of boyfriends over one solid partner, but only because I believe I can only find my partner after I found my power. But yes, one crap relationship after another, here I stand. There's a lot of misconceptions about Muslim women out there in media. People are sort of making their own conclusions. And I feel that it's important for women to come together to first talk about it. This is what Muslim women are about. This is what they, when it, when it comes to relationships, this is what their thoughts are. <laughs>